Hey, everybody, this is Tony, and I'm here today with a special guest, uh, Miss Ajani Scott. How you doing today? Hi, Ajani. <laughs> Ajani, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> where, did, where did that name come from? It's so unique. Thank you. Um, actually, my dad named me. Um, it's a Nigerian name. It's from the mm -hmm. Yoruba. Um, and it means one who survives. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, I never heard a name that unique. And it's it's so crazy. Do people call you just that all the time? Or do they call you like a nickname too? No, I have several nicknames. I have oh. Aj, Aja, me. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> any a lot of different variations of that name. Okay, okay. Of course, <laughs> Ajani, uh, you're a cast member of uh, VH1 show Love and Listening. Um, yeah. In season one, though, we got to meet you. You basically talked about your journey and becoming a real estate agent, a celebrity real estate agent. Um, and you said you moved from Michigan all the way to L.A. So what prompted your move um, in, in basically in becoming a real estate agent? Um, well, I initially moved to L.A. to pursue a singing career. Um, okay. and, and as I was pursuing that, you know, I figured that I, I kind of have some expensive taste. I like the finer things out here. And real estate is definitely a gateway to open those doors for me. So um, I got my real estate license. At first, I, I really didn't take real estate too seriously because I was pursuing my music. Um, but then, you know, once I closed the deal and I saw what it could do for me, I started to pursue the real estate. And then the music took kind of a, a back burner role. So okay so when you were in michigan you were doing more of like the music uh type of stuff yes 100 percent. i was very okay. serious about that career and that's why i came here because i figured i needed to be in la or new york you know to be in the middle of the action but you know i was lucky to discover real estate also which landed okay. me on vh1 so you know go figure <laughs> <laughs> of course so now you know we got to hear some of this music now you know what? I actually have one song on YouTube and I'm working on some more music that will be coming okay. out hopefully before the end of this year. Um, my focus right now is definitely the luxury real estate. Um, but it, it, you know, with COVID and everything like that, I've kind of had some time to work on my craft um, music wise. So I cannot wait to release some projects. All right. I'm glad to hear that. So we'll definitely be looking for that. Um, yes. Now, of course, as far as the real estate, Real estate is already a hard enough industry as it is, but to be a celebrity real estate agent is a little bit different. So yes. was for you, uh, mindset wise, was it a little apprehensiveness? Like what were you thinking going into it? Um, going into celebrity real estate, that is pretty ambitious. Um, but I just love the entertainment world in general, whether it's sports or music or acting. You know, I wasn't pursuing my singing directly, but I still wanted to be a part of entertainment. So okay. it's perfect for me to kind of marry those two worlds to be in the luxury celebrity real estate market because I can do the real estate, but still not have to completely detach from that world. So it's perfect for me. Right. Okay. Makes sense. And then, you know, of course, you were waiting tables while you were trying to get your uh, real estate uh, situation off the ground. Uh, was yes. it ever, you know, I won't say, well, I'll say discouraging uh, for you at some point doing that and knowing what you really want to do? Um, I don't know if discouraging would be the word. Um, I definitely was hustling. Um, there were days when I hated work, but I mean, I think that comes with any job. Um, there are going to be some parts that you love and some parts that are just not your favorite thing to do. Um, but I enjoyed my time waitressing. I enjoyed the relationships that I had with my coworkers. Um, it was an easy job. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to make more money than I probably should have been making doing what I was doing, <laughs> which is, you know, something I found out interesting about LA is, um, you know, the servicing industry, as far as like food, like waitressing and bartending, it can be very lucrative. Like I know bartenders yeah. that make like a hundred grand a year. So, yeah. um, you know, I found out that that there's nothing to sneeze at, you know, it was a good job. It, it definitely paid the bills. It afforded me the flexibility to be able to also pursue the real estate. So, um, mm -hmm. I have no regrets and it, it, Real estate is hard, but I knew that going into it. So I was never discouraged. I just knew that I had to keep on pushing. 
Okay. I mean, I have to say this, though. Anybody coming from the Detroit, the D, uh, you know, they normally pretty forward to people. So, I, I mean, you kind of proved that during this time, too. You can be kind of subtle, but you definitely made sure you, you proved your point. So, yes. I mean, it's, it's a great, great, uh, how do you say, trait to have. Um, but talk to me about how the show um, ended up coming about for you. Um, actually, it was through Instagram. Um, a lot of people think that being discovered is like dead, but it's not, especially <laughs> with Instagram. Um, yeah. I had no vision or plans on being on any type of real estate show whatsoever. It really was a blessing. Um, I just was posting my pictures and hashtagging real estate. And it just so happened that the creators of the show were looking through those hashtags um, and they stumbled upon my page and reached out to me and said, hey, we're doing this show you should come audition. And I, I didn't even think it was anything serious. Like I didn't right, right. know that it was going to end up on VH1 and have season two, you know, possibly season three. Um, it, it really just blossomed into something much bigger than I ever expected. So I went to a couple of interviews and um, then I found out I got the part or, okay. <laughs> or I, 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 as a cast member. Um, and yeah. it, it really, really was so exciting because I didn't get my hopes up at first. I didn't really take it seriously. I'm like, oh, this show, whatever. I'll give it a shot. But I wasn't really thinking it would turn into anything as special as it has been for me. So it right. it really fell out of the sky. It was not something I was seeking. And I'm so blessed to have that opportunity. Of course. Of course. I'm sure more opportunities have probably opened up for you now since being on the show. Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, it's been great for business, um, first of all, you know, with, with real estate. And also, it's just, it's helped me grow my fan base and put me in a position where I can grow even further and reach more people. Um, it's, it's just been a great experience overall for me in my personal life. And it's obviously wonderful to have on your resume. And um, it, it is, it is. <laughs> and it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's opening doors, but you have to, it's kind of like you get your pinky toe in the door, but then you got to bust it down yourself. You know what I mean? There you because go. There you things go. don't, you know, always just fall out of the sky. You have to make, you have to work to make things happen. And, you know, the show can only take you so far and right. everything that you do and are good at can only take you so far if you don't push yourself and believe in yourself and make other people believe in you too. Yeah, that's true. You did, you hit mm -hmm. it dead on the head. I couldn't have said it better. So, oh, you know, you. we know that you do real estate and we know that you do singing. What else is it that you do? Because it seems like you do everything. <laughs> uh, no, I wish I was Wonder Woman. Those are really like my two focus areas right now. Um, I'm, I love the modeling world as well. I mean, even before yeah. singing as a little girl, I wanted to be like Naomi Campbell so bad. Like I wanted to be a <laughs> runway way model. That was it. Like I want to be a runway model, but I'm like five or four ten. So those dreams were <laughs> crushed long ago. <laughs> um, but you know, I wouldn't mind doing some editorial, maybe some commercial modeling. Um, so that's in the very near, near future as well. Okay. You know, you definitely get a lot of com compliments online. A lot of people, you know, compare you, uh, your look um to like SZA and and different people uh I even seen Anika Noni Rose uh the actress as well and yes. of course because of the big hair and stuff like that but you know you definitely get a lot of compliments online so that would be definitely something to look at yes yes I think anything is possible if you can conceive it if you can think it in your mind then it can definitely be real life absolutely so mm -hmm. now let's talk about the show so now okay. I gotta uh talk about some of these crazy moments that you guys had over this, the first season. Of course, you're on season two now. Yeah. Uh, first season, you had your very first client, very first celebrity client, Sean Kingston. You ended yeah. up thinking that was going to be a, you know, a good situation and the deal ended up dying. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up seeing you have Amber Rose on there. You had the situation with the bubble bath. What yeah. is, is there anything that you could possibly, you know, say or do in a situation like that that's that's that can even help you really because it was kind of like crazy but it was so good that she understood where you were coming from you know so yeah how do you how do you even it, it fathom something like that do you even think something like that will happen well I think 
in any situation, especially real estate, when you have a relationship with your client, the number one thing to be is just honest. Even if you're wrong or even if you mess up, they're going to respect your honesty. Just say, hey, I messed up or, you know, I'm going to be late or I can't, you know, I can't deliver what I promised you, whatever the case is just be honest and be yourself. And I feel like that will get you through any situation. That's the path of least resistance is to just be honest because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be wrong. You know, it happens. You're human. So just be honest because they're human too. And they know what it's like to mess up and make mistakes. And, you know, you just have to reciprocate that honesty. Of course, of course. Um, Now in the Sean Kingston deal, uh, you and Taylor ended up kind of having uh, a little ruffling on the feathers, probably, um, <laughs> because she basically was saying things weren't done until they were actually signed. It yeah. turns out she was right, but she just didn't provide the message in the right kind of way. Um, so what what would you say that you learned from that situation um, as a whole? Um, not necessarily with her, but just the deal itself. Um, I mean, it, she was right. She was 100% correct. I mean, there are a lot of deals that come this close to closing and they don't. You really cannot celebrate until it's time to celebrate. You will get your heart broken doing that. So, you know, I've got a couple of deals in the works right now that in my heart, I'm like, this is going to close, but I refuse to pop any bottles. I won't do it. I don't even (laughs) talk about it. I I don't even talk about deals until they're done. Like, oh yeah, that's what I've been doing for three months. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I... (laughs) Like, yeah, you can't celebrate until it's time to celebrate because you will be devastated doing that in real estate and you have to be open you have to know that you know things happen and and they pop up you just can't get too excited until it's time to so if you go into any deal knowing that then you have less of a chance of going through that that pain when you know in fact if it doesn't close right right I think you have the right kind of mindset though Um, and some people don't really know how to deal with situations when they arise like that because a lot of people would have probably said, I got to quit. That, that's it. You know, yeah. but you were like, no, this is what I want. I know what I want. This is just a step mm-hmm. in, the, in the situation that I'm in, but I know things will start to work out. So therefore yeah. you started to move forward in what you were doing still, and it worked for you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. kudos on that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but do, did you find that it was hard for you to adapt um, being in the group uh, as far as all of the guys and the girls? Um, Did you find it was hard for you to adapt being in that kind of situation? Yes, because these are successful business men and women, and they have closed deals and had tons of experience. You know, before me, I was new to the group and it was intimidating, but also I knew that I had to surround myself with those type of people if this is the business that I want to be successful in. I mean, you are who you hang with, and that's something that you learn, you know, as an entrepreneur. So it was intimidating, but I have to, I had to force myself to be uncomfortable for a while because I knew the value of what they could teach me just by being around them. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, now of course, during the season, um, you know, you got thrown into some drama, um, with any of these shows, drama will come. Um, but you know, the situation with Andrew happened, uh, rumors started to happen, uh, eventually at the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the sleepover or the slumber party, rather. Uh, yeah. You admit it to the girls uh, about what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, it led to some more drama. Um, but what I wanted to know from you was, did you do you regret ever being involved in the situation as a whole? Because it kind of almost affected business for you. Uh, it definitely did, but it was a learning situation. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in not having regrets. You know, because I feel like any decision that you made in the past has led you to where you are right now. And in some type of way, maybe had I not made that decision, I might not be where I am today, you know? So I don't regret any decision that I make, um, honestly, because, you know, just comparing where I am today from then, I'm in a much better position. So, you know, my past, even though it's been bumpy in some spots, it has led me here. So I'm a human and I make mistakes. And but mistakes are to be learned from. So I don't regret what I did because I did what I wanted to do. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And basically, I mean, Hey, at the end of the day, you're grown, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes people find it very hard to mind their own business. And that's what tripped me out. And then Mm -hmm. it's almost like, uh, I'm so interested in what you're doing as opposed to what I'm doing that I have to just keep, you know, digging on this. 
Yeah. Um, but I think you handled yourself well in the situation, though. Um, Thank you. I did the, my best. Yeah, yeah. As we all can, because what what more can you do? Mm-hmm. But um, in this in the slumber party, though, uh, eventually it got kind of physical with Taylor and uh, Sierra. And, you know, uh, Taylor ended up going outside and or getting put outside, rather. And you kind of, you know, went to go check on her and, and be a friend, really. Although yeah. you guys kind of started off rocky, you know, why why was that so important for you at that moment? Because I, I don't think that Taylor is a bad person at all. I think that she is lacking in love and nurturing and just lacking somebody there to support her and be there for her. And in that moment, something just clicked within me, like, this is not the time to push her away. This is a good time. She's vulnerable. Let's bring her in and, and give her that love. Let's nurture, you know? And that's just the type of person that I am. I don't like to see people being outcasts or people putting their hands on people for God's sake, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I felt that in that moment that she was hurting and I could tell that, you know, even though she's a very strong woman, she also has pain and I wanted to be a friend to her instead of an enemy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really shows your character though. And that's what I respect most about you. Uh, watching all of you guys on this show, you know, everybody is starting to be known and, you know, you're starting to see who who is who and what is what, but your character really showed in that moment because this is somebody who basically gave you a cold shoulder in the beginning and here you are like, Hey, it's all right. I, I'm looking out for you, you know? So right. it shows how big you were. Um, so Thank that you. was all, Thank that you. was definitely a good thing. Thank you. Um, no, no problem. So now, uh, of course, uh, after all that has happened, we are in season two now. So yes. kudos and congratulations for coming back to season two. Thank uh, you. Hopefully we're coming back for season three as well. Yep. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, on this season, though, you uh, brought your own love uh, on this season, uh, Taryn. Yeah. Uh, was it, you know, kind of hard for you or were you a little apprehensive of doing that or bringing him on the show? Uh, not for me, because that's my real life. And this is a reality show. So for me to okay. not include him or not involve him would be cutting out a huge chunk of my life. So for me, it was like, naturally, I would bring him on. Okay. All right. I know a lot of people are just like, no, because then it calls questions and it calls this and it calls, but I'm glad that you have that um, confidence. And speaking of confidence, you know, after the situation that happened last season, you said you feel like you got your confidence back um, yeah. as far as business. Do you really feel that you got it back now? 100%. You know, it's everybody's journey is different. And in the beginning of real estate in particular, it's very, very hard you are self-employed, you are a business starter, you are an entrepreneur, and that is just not an easy task, period, for anyone. Um, So I had to go through some things, but I stuck with it, and I do have my confidence back, and and I'm learning every day, like I'm learning exponentially, and I love what I'm learning. I love how I compare how much, I, I love how I can compare how much I know now versus even a year ago. So um, I, I'm enjoying the ride. I really am. Okay. Now we see now that you're getting Lonnie Love as a client. Um, and you talked about DMing her, though, to even be a client. You know, how does, how does that situation work? I mean, I know how that works, but do you have like a mindset like, no, this is unprofessional. I shouldn't do it. Or did you just, you know, think like, let me go for it? Well, you know, sometimes you just have to take a chance. It, it may not be the most orthodox, path but you have to take a chance and if you want something just go after it like I didn't have her phone number I didn't have direct access to her I mean everybody's on Instagram there's no other way to contact her you know so I didn't I didn't know if she would even see it let alone respond (laughs) you know so I just took a chance I'm like you know what I really want her as a client I really want to be able to help her out I respect her grind I respect her hustle I respect her message I just really really like her as a person or liked her as a person from what I had seen on TV Um, And Mm -hmm. then after meeting her in person, she's just that times 10. And um, I just took a chance, you know, and it worked (laughs) out for me. But I'm big on taking chances and risks because you have to go for things. Otherwise, you never know if it's going to work or not. Of course, of course. And I want people who are going to see this to really see and hear this story because uh, Instagram has been working wonders for you, apparently. <laughs> yes, it, it has brought me business, you know, from clients who have seen the show and just like me as a person, like, hey, I, yeah. I want you to help me out. I want you to be my agent. Um, business that I never would have, have gotten, you know, so it's been a huge platform and I'm I'm just very blessed. 
Yeah, it's absolutely a, a, a great situation. I'm definitely proud of your success in this show um, and beyond the show, um, especially you. not knowing you and seeing you come on as a new person, seeing how you interact, what your personality is, and then just seeing how hard you are, are about your business. Um, that's you. what I respect most. Um, but just tell people what we can see from you or expect from you for the rest of the season. I know you can't give us much, of course. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. So I'll be finding out along with you guys what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> honestly, you know, so much happens um, that we film and they, they have to edit it, you know, to fit it into eight to 10 episodes. So I mean, there are things that happen. You don't know if they're going to air that conversation or air that showing or, you know, you just don't know. So I right, truly right. am watching along with the rest of you guys to see what happens. I'm excited every Monday. I'm like, I can't wait to see what they put on tonight. What's going to happen tonight? <laughs> on Love and Listen. I, I don't know. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm watching along with you guys and I'm thankful to everybody that even tunes into the show. Um, you can expect to see me you can expect to see Ajani being Ajani and I will always be that that's right well Ajani before you go just let everybody know where they can find you on your social media pages Facebook Instagram Twitter whatever you have you can find me at Ajani Scott on all platforms all right Ajani I want to thank you so very much for being yourself and thank you for doing this with me today okay of course thank you for having me thank you so no much no problem I wish you continued success and see you soon Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.